Hello, today we're going to talk about multiplication of probability. All right, here are the formulas we're going to use. So when you do probability, the probability of something happening would be the number of excesses over the total number of possibilities. When you're doing the multiplication probability, it's the probability of A times probability of B. This actually, so if event A and event B have non-zero probabilities in a sample space, it, if and only if P as of A and B equals P A times P B, then events A and B are independent events. Uh, the and the probability of success of first event and P of A, this event results in success, and if the probability of success of the second event, is PB, then the probability of success of both events is the order stated is PA times PB. That makes doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you use your common sense, you know how to do this pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of trickery and all this stuff, like in everything. Probability is one of those things that seems super simple, but it's incredibly difficult to do. There's some people that get that, there's some not. Um, so we're gonna go, let's go through some problems with you. All right, for this first example, we're gonna talk about a school bus. So if a school bus, reading off of something. So the probability of a school bus arriving late, so bus arrive late is 0.19. The bus arrive early is 0 0.02. Or that's 2% and 19%, however you want to say it. So for our first part of this, so A, what are the chances of the bus arriving early two days in a row? Two days in a row. So the probability that, so that would be the PA times PB. So the probability that it shows up early the first day is 0.02. The probability that it shows up early the next day is still 0 0.02. So when you multiply those out, you get 0 0.0004. So your probability that it arrives early two days in a row is actually 0.04%. All right, I'll color code this. So the probability of our second one. So what is the probability that the bus will arrive on time the next two days? So you have to figure out, so, so arrive on time two days or next two days. So you have to figure out what it is, the probability of actually arriving on time. So if it's 0.19 that's going to be late, and it's going to be 0 0.02 that it arrives early. So you have to add that to, we'll call it X. And this whole thing is going to equal 1 because you can only have 100% odds when you're doing this. So your X is on time. So if you have a 2% chance of being early, 19% chance of it being late, then the rest of the time it has to be on time. So that's our X. So we have to figure out what it is. So that's 1 equals 0.21 plus x minus 0.21 minus 0.21 to get 0.79 equals how much it's on time. So arrive next two days on time, 0.79 times 0.79, and you get 0.62. So the chances of that bus arriving on time in the next two days is 62% because you found out the percentage of time it, it comes on time, you just multiply it by the two events. Right. And that's been example number one. All right, if, for our second example, let's say you need to check out a, a book from the library. You're gonna to go to two different libraries. At the first library, you have a 52% chance of getting the book there. At the second library, you have a 25% chance of finding it there. All right, so you need this book. So for part A, 
What are the chances that you will not get it at the first? So not at first, but you find it at the second. All right, so we have to find out a percentage. So you, if I tell you there's a 52% chance you'll find it, so if you don't find it, what's that percentage? Well, it's 48% or 0.48, all right? And then saying you're gonna find it at the next one, so this is the, prob this is the probability of the first event. This is, you have 48% chance of not finding it. You multiply that by the chance of finding it at the next one, all right? And then you get 0.12. So you have a 12% chance of not finding it the first one, but finding it at the second one. Uh, our second. So what if I said neither of these can be found at the library? So your chances of not finding it at the first. and not at second. So if you have 52% chance of finding it, you, so you have a 48% chance of not finding it, and you have a 75% chance of not finding it at the next one. So you multiply those two together, and it's 0.36 or 36%. So you have a 36% chance of not finding your book at all in either library. All right, for this problem, we're gonna deal with a biased coin. So let's say when you throw a biased coin, uh, when you get heads two-fifths of the time with a biased coin. Uh, so the rest of the time, you'll get tails three-fifths of the time. So, so for part A, we're going to say, what is the probability with this biased coin that I get tails three times in a row? So, three times in a row, so I have a three-fifths chance one time, a three-fifths chance the next time, and a three-fifths chance the next time. So you multiply those all together. You can also rewrite this as three over five to the third, if you want. So it gives us 27 over 125. Or I believe that's a, it's approximately about a 22% chance around there that you'll get tails three times with this biased coin. All right, so what if you got two tails and a head? So part B, what are the chances that I will flip a coin and get tails two times and then heads once? right after that. Well, I have a three-fifths chance of getting it tails first time, a three-fifths chance of getting it tails second time, and a two-fifths chance of getting uh, heads on that last one. So that's 18 over 125. All right, so basically all you're doing with all these is you're finding the probability of each event which I'm giving you, and then you're just multiplying them together to figure out. So you have two different events, and you're just multiplying them together. Sometimes you have three, sometimes you have five events. You just multiply all the events together to figure out your probability. All right, for our last one, we have an orange and a blue cube. So that means it's six-sided. Uh, I'll even color code this. So an orange and a blue cube. What is the probability that I roll this and I get... Uh, odds on the orange dice and get a total of five. So 
I have to write this out. So how do I get the total of five? So I can roll a one on the orange and a four on the blue. I can roll a two on the orange and a three on the blue. Now I can roll a, a four on the orange and a one on the blue. Or I can do a three on the orange and a two on the blue. So there's four possibilities of me rolling a five. So we'll do this one first. So it's two different events. So one is what is the probability of me rolling a five between two. So this is four chances. There's a total of 36 altogether. Uh, well, results you can get. So 4 over 36. That's our first probability. So the chance of getting 5 combined. All right. Now we have to do the second one. So the probability of our second event. So it's high, probability of getting 5 with orange being an odd number. So of these total 4, how many are odd? Just two of them. So we multiply that together. I'm gonna simplify this down to one over nine times one over two. So the answer is 118. That you will get, roll two dice, one orange, one blue. Uh, your orange will be an odd and the number will equal there you go. All right, this has been Multiplication Probabilities. Hope it helped, and good luck.